everyone. I hope you're ready for lunch. Oh, I guess the things that I'm making today are not really lunch. Um, I decided to pick two side dishes from one of our new cookbooks uh, to maybe inspire you for the upcoming holiday for Thanksgiving if you're celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, but I also wanted to pick things that were really easy also, and this cookbook is really good for easy. I'll introduce it to you in a minute because I know that Thanksgiving probably looks very different for many of us. And so maybe you don't want to cook a big meal. Maybe it's only just your immediate household. Maybe it's just you. Maybe it's not so many people. Um, but I just wanted to pick some things that were easy. Maybe you haven't tried anything like that before. And so for today, the cookbook that we're using, oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Hey, um, again, precarious positioning here with the camera and the phone. <laughs> and because I set it up differently, every week I set it up a little bit differently and it doesn't like that. And I also have it um, plugged in, which is putting a little tension on the, Whole setup. No, oh, now it's not going to stay. Anyway, the catalyst for this falling over was I tried to pick up the cookbook. Anyway, here I am, and here's my cabinet. Um, the cookbook that I have for today is um, a lot of people know Jacques Pepin. This is the Quick and Simple Cookbook. It is pretty much brandy new. Um, I think it only came out last month, so we have it here at the library, and it's a lot of um, some typical recipes like a good Caesar salad, a good Greek salad, um, but also like sauteed spinach with nutmeg, um, some Boston baked beans, typical, but how do you make it really easy? How do you do that at home? A brown rice ragu, cornmeal mush with cheese. I don't know what that is. Oh, like grits. Okay. Mush. Um, rice stick noodles with mushrooms. So it's all sorts of um, dishes that can be really easy. Um, these sound really good. He has a couple of these spicy bean tortilla pizzas, cheese and tomato corn tortilla pizza. So just using a tortilla as a, as a pizza crust. Um, let's see what else. There are some desserts in here, of course, cream of leek soup, cream of pumpkin soup. It's just how to use like ready, easy ingredients and quick methods to make a dish that probably seems like you took a long time to make it. Um, pear, apple, gratin, gloria. I don't know what that is, but it's pear, apple, mix of croissants, Danish pastry, pound cake, muffins, pies, cookies, scones, and or bread. So it's almost like a, like a bread pudding, like a gratin. Oh, that sounds good. Um, wow, I'm hungry and I'd like to eat that, but it's full of things I don't normally eat. <laughs> um, orange cake with Grand Marnier sauce. Uh, clafouti of cherries, amandine, which I thought about making and then I was like, I don't feel like getting cherries. Blueberry crisp. Why am I only going through the desserts? Um, but also, you know, some fancier things. Braised short ribs in red wine sauce. But again, here's how to make it really easy. Like the recipes are all just pretty much just one, the one page. So uh, they're not difficult at all. Uh, we'll go through more of the cookbook in a little bit, but I want to get started with the first thing, which we're making a uh, pumpkin with cheese gratin. So this is really easy because you used canned pumpkin puree. Now this is at a weird angle. Do I tempt, do I tempt fate? Do I tempt it? I shouldn't, but oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> oh no. I definitely need a better setup than two old cardboard boxes balanced in my sink. But this is the life of 2020. That's better. Oh, okay, hold your breath. <laughs> so you can use canned pumpkin for it. I have this mixing bowl ready to go. Um, and it's really simple. So yeah, you can use a can of pumpkin puree. So right now my oven is preheated to 375 degrees. And basically this is one of those things where you put all the ingredients in one bowl. It's like a one, one mixing bowl and then one baking dish kind of, kind of a deal, which is really nice. So the ingredients are a can of pumpkin puree, two large eggs, a cup of light cream, I'm using coconut milk, um, some salt and pepper. Of course you wanna make sure you're using like 
good ground pepper or whatever because if you're having simple ingredients you want good quality ingredients um ground nutmeg which i forgot to get um so i'm going to use a little cinnamon they kind of have a similar effect but obviously they're very different so i'm just going to add just a little bit for a little bit of a, a warming effect um butter to grease your dish which i've already done and two ounces of swiss or a, a nicer swiss like gruyere cheese to top it so this is really easy so here's my mixing bowl i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna get my pumpkin puree into the bowl so easy already where's my where's my spatula here we go okay so i'm gonna get this in the bowl And this doesn't even take that long to cook. Um, it says it only takes about half an hour. You just want to make sure that the eggs and the, the cream or coconut milk, whatever it is that you're using, whatever dairy replacement you're using is um, good to go. All right, a little bit of pumpkin left over. It's just for me. So I'm going to leave a little bit of the leftover pumpkin uh, for licorice because <laughs> she loves pumpkin. So I'm going to put this to the side for her. <laughs> She's a big, big fan of canned pumpkin. I'm not really sure where that came from. All right. Okay, so I've got my two eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and get that a crack and just put that in. There's really nothing fancy about this recipe. No fancy techniques, nothing. Really nice, I appreciate that. Put the eggs in, come on, crack a little more. There's like such a fine balance between I have overcracked this egg and now there are egg whites everywhere and it's not cracked enough. Okay, so I'm gonna go throw the eggshells out and wash my hands. Right. Um, so I'm using coconut milk instead of Cream. Um, I have cream, but I'm saving it for next week's recipe. And so you want to use something that does have a little, little bit of thickness to it. Um, something like almond milk is probably too thin. I'm just using about a cup here. Actually, I did have enough. That was good. So I like the coconut milk because it doesn't taste coconutty, but it does have a, a nice texture. So I'm gonna pour that right in. I'm gonna season with my salt and pepper little bit of cinnamon, about three quarters of a teaspoon it says. All right, so that's my trick. I think I've mentioned it before. When you're grinding the salt yourself, I leave the lid on and I grind it upside down. So that way I can see here and kind of get a little estimate uh, how much salt is in here. Let's see, how much do I feel like that is? It's probably good. and some ground black pepper. And a little pinch of cinnamon. All right, that was more than a pinch, Shh, it's fine. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this up. I'm gonna use my whisk. Might need to add more salt. I feel like I didn't add enough salt. But I always like err on the side of caution with salt, but it's all right. So see, I'm just gonna give it a nice mix. So I guess it's like almost like a custardy kind of thing here, but it's not, but it's savory because we had salt and pepper. So it's not a pumpkin pie. It almost is a pumpkin pie, but it's not a pumpkin pie. Uh, but see, it's like really, this is really so easy and this is a really nice side dish. Um, maybe instead of like candied yams, this is a little more sophisticated because pumpkin can be a little sweet, but you add the savory element to it um, and then you add the cheese. So maybe, you know, this is really, really simple instead. All right, so this is ready to go into my buttered little baby single serving casserole dish. Okay, maybe not single serving, but sometimes I get hungry. So this is gonna go right into my little dish, my prepared dish. I've already buttered it. Good, very good. Put this to the side. And now we get to grate the Swiss cheese on top. 
So I just got like plain Swiss cheese. I didn't get anything fancy, but like I said, you could get something like a Gruyere. You can get whatever kind of Swiss type flavor profile cheese that you really like. Here we go. This is very exciting. It's like watching paint dry, right? Yeah. Mm -mm. Let me just grate it on the board and then put it over top. And I think it's nice to have a savory pumpkin dish. Like, I guess I've had pumpkin soup before. Um, like, I put pumpkin in my chili but it's not like a dominant flavor and you know we always think of pumpkin as you know pumpkin pie or pumpkin cake or whatever um so to try it as a savory side dish might be nice and again this is really really easy really really easy all right it's going it's going i always say i should grate the cheese before I filmed, but I figured that I was like, well, there's not that much cheese, and Swiss cheese is soft. It's nice and easy, too. It's great. It's fine. All right. And I like cheese, so I kind of want to be like, oh, do a lot of cheese. There's no need to have that much cheese, Alyssa. Yes, there is. All right. I think that's pretty good. So I'm just going to top my pumpkin mixture with the cheese. There we go. You can see it. sure you get all the way to the edges like let's let's not leave any pumpkin uncovered by the delicious cheese right all right i probably need a little more Shh, need a little more <laughs> just to get to some of those corners i don't want to leave any part of this pumpkin feeling like it is unloved by the cheese. All right, that should be good. All right, I put the cheese grater in the sink. There we go, nice and covered, full coverage. And so basically you bake this for about 30 minutes or until it's not so, see how jiggly that is? You don't want it to be so jiggly uh, because you want those eggs to have set. And then uh, you'll see a little bit of browning and bubbling with your cheese. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven now. A little thermometer that I leave in there. All right, here we go. All right, there you go, my friend. Bake well. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that was our pumpkin gratin. Um, I'm going to put my Swiss cheese back in the fridge. In my bag, in my stasher bag favorite. Let me keep it nice and fresh and environmentally friendly. Okay, and we're going to move on to ooh, some cheese. We're going to move on to our second side dish. Okay, so this one's a little different. Normally we do potatoes. We do a lot of baked potatoes or a lot of mashed potatoes. What if it's just you or it's just you and your spouse or you and like one kid or something for Thanksgiving? You don't want to. This recipe uses potatoes to make a potato salad, but it's a warm potato salad. So it's not like the kind that you're gonna get from the grocery store and bring on a picnic with you or at a barbecue. Um, it's a little different. I thought it sounded really interesting. And so again, the whole spin of this cookbook that Jacques Pepin did is that everything is supposed to be really easy. So he actually says, start with potatoes that are already cooked, already cooked and already warmed. 
So I have potatoes that I baked in the microwave and they're already ready to go. There they are. And they're still pretty warm, but I might warm them up again a little bit. I have some scallions. You were right, mom. Scallions are today. I have some scallions that I already washed and sliced. Um, I think the potatoes need to be warmed a little bit because you do want, you know, you want everything to be warm. They're warm, but you don't want them to be too hot. Okay, so I'm gonna warm them for just like 30 seconds. I'm gonna switch to this recipe and we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> All right, so a warm potato salad. This salad makes use of cooked potatoes. If the potatoes are cold, slice them and reheat them slightly in the microwave. The flavor is much better if the salad is not ice cold. Use leftover boiled or baked potatoes. Use leftovers. This is the quick and simple book. Um, so the, <laughs> the method for this is literally, it's gonna take two seconds, you'll see. But you use, um, obviously I'm just making this single serve so I can have it with my chicken that I already have cooked for lunch. Um, but you, it gives you the recipe for like one and a half pounds of cooked potatoes to make like a nice big serving of potato salad, mayonnaise, Dijon style mustard, uh, white wine vinegar or rice vinegar, things I don't have. I'm going to use apple cider vinegar, uh, Worcestershire sauce, which I also don't have. We'll talk about that in a minute because I don't use it. So it's like not something I want to keep in the fridge. It's just not something I use. Um, salt, black pepper, scallions and mild onions such as Vidalia, which I'm not gonna use today. I don't feel like having onion. Um, I'm sure it would be delicious with the onions, but I don't feel like having onion today. Um, but I always keep chopped frozen onions on hand, and I think I still have a shallot in there, and I still have some frozen uh, red onions. So I always have onions on hand, but today I was like, I don't know if I feel like it. Um, okay, let me get my potatoes. <laughs> So we're gonna start, he says, to scrape the skin from your potatoes and cut them into slices. So not, we're not doing cubes, we're doing slices here. So I'm just going to, can you see my board? I don't want to upset the balance. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to take off a lot of the skin. I do like some skin in my potato salad. Like, have you ever had a, uh, a red potato salad that's really actually very, very good with the skin on, I, I like? Uh, and of course, you just have to make sure that you wash your potatoes really well if you're keeping the skin on, whether you're making french fries or potato salad or whatever. Wash it really well, which I did. Um, I can actually peel my skin off because they're nice and cooked and baked. And of course, it also depends on what kind of potatoes you're using, how, how well they hold together, this and that kind of thing. Um, He also has a basic boiled potatoes recipe in here to show you how to do basic boiled potatoes. Like I said, I just cook them in the microwave because it's easy. It takes a little while, but it's easy. So I'm gonna leave some of the skin on here, but not all of it. All right, there we go. Yeah, I love potato salad. I love potatoes. Um, potatoes are like the best food group. I know they're not really a food group, it's okay. Um, <laughs> um, I still have another potato in the fridge. I'm probably gonna make fries or something later. Sounds good. All right, warm tape down. Get that in there. Yeah, this is easier than making mashed potatoes and maybe you know you want something a little different than a baked potato, so why not maybe try the warm potato salad? Um, you know, you may not want to go through the hassle of making mashed potatoes from scratch, but maybe you want something a little different than mashed potatoes from a packet, right? Although, no shame, I used to eat that as a snack a lot. <laughs> I like potatoes. All right. I'm just going to keep peeling. It comes off nice and easy. Uh, and then next week, we're also going to do a couple more sides. Uh, I mentioned last week, one of them is going to be the cream biscuits from the America's Test Kitchen Cookbook. 
And then the other one, um, I took a look at Carla Hall's Soul Food Cookbook. Yeah, Carla Hall's Soul Food Every Day and Celebration Cookbook. It's on the table right behind me. Um, and I found a really great, um, instead of doing cornbread, there's, well, there is a cornbread recipe in there, of course. Um, but there's also like a spoon bread recipe. So I'm going to try that next week and see. Um, kind of makes me think of somewhere in between like a cornbread and like pudding and like this, my parents love this, um, what is it, like corn souffle that we get at one of the barbecue places that we go to. So kind of seems like one of those things. So I'll make it next week and maybe I'll actually bring it to Thanksgiving. So if you're watching mom and dad, get excited. Maybe it'll be like your corn souffle that you like so much. But we'll see what happens when we get there next week. All right, so you can see there's some steam rising. I don't know if you can see. I can see there's some steam rising for my potatoes, so I know they're still nice and warm. Definitely cut these into thicker slices than the cookbook calls for, but this is my kitchen. I do what I want. Okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do next, I have a spoon for some of my ingredients um, and I'm just gonna eyeball it because again, this recipe is for a bigger batch if you're serving it to multiple people, uh, for four. This is a bigger batch for four and I'm just serving myself for lunch. So I'm just gonna do a spoonful of this amazing avocado oil, super healthy, no sugar mayonnaise. Makes me really happy, very healthy. Healthy fats instead of gross. Uh, I have some really nice spicy uh, Dijon mustard from Trader Joe's that I always keep in my fridge. Definitely packs a punch, so I'm just going to use a little bit. Yeah, one and a half tablespoons. I'm not even going to, not even close. Okay, just a little bit. Add in there. Okay, what else? Uh, salt and pepper, of course, we have to season our food. Um, that was a lot of pepper. Excuse me. Some salt. I know that this particular brand of mayonnaise is a little tangy. I might not need that much salt, so I started with a little bit. And then I have some apple cider vinegar. Um, you only need two teaspoons of vinegar to serve for, so I'm just going to do like a little capful here. Not even. I guess this is just to brighten it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so the Worcestershire sauce. I don't ever use it. It's, I think in the past two years, maybe I've seen one or two recipes, not including this one that I've had it. And so what do you do? Apparently you can use a little bit of soy sauce and hot sauce to kind of mimic the flavor, but it's not quite, I don't know. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just a little bit of um, soy sauce, non-soy soy sauce, if you're me. Just a little dash and a little dash of the hot sauce. And at this point, you also put in your onions if you're using onions. Just a little bit. And I'm just gonna mix it up and like, that's it. Like that's, that's it, that's the warm potato salad. And you're using potatoes that you've already cooked ahead of time or maybe you had left over, that's it. And I guess potato salad is an easy recipe no matter what, but, um, you know, like I said, maybe you want to try something a little different for Thanksgiving this year. And you don't want to make mashed potatoes. Why not give it a try? Alright, that looks pretty good. Can you see it? It looks pretty good. I just want to mix it in a little bit better because I can see some of the potatoes definitely have some hot sauce on them. So let's keep mixing. You can break up your potatoes a little bit. They don't need to stay in big chunks like I did with mine. I know he wanted it in slices, but we're not going for food beauty queen here. We're just going for delicious. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so that's it. That's the warm potato salad. That's it. And it is, it's slightly warm. It's not hot. It's not melting the oil and the mayonnaise, but it helps to combine all of the ingredients together. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little taste. I'm gonna try to get the excess amount of scallions off my spoon, because that's disgusting. Okay, I don't need a mouthful of scallions. Okay, um, so I'm gonna give this a taste with its seasonings and everything. What is this good? I do need more salt. Oh, I can taste the Dijon. So good. Do you need more salt? I'm trying to think if I need a little more vinegar to brighten it up. I need more salt than that. Okay. Don't be afraid of salt if you're salting your own food, right? I'm just going to add another splash of the vinegar. this all in again and we're going to taste it one more time. I'm going to put it aside and I'm going to have it with my chicken for lunch. <laughs> all right. Yeah, definitely we normally think of potato salad as just like potatoes and onions, maybe some celery and just a lot, a lot of mayonnaise and there's probably a lot of sugar in it, but this this actually, because of the Dijon, it feels a little warm. Because it's a warm potato salad, it feels like you don't need to be outside on a picnic. Feels good for Thanksgiving or any kind of colder weather gathering. It's nice. All right, let's taste it again. Make sure we got enough seasoning on there. Perfect. Wow, it's good. This is a really good combination. Is actually delicious. I love this. It was so easy because, you know, if you have leftover potatoes or if you're somebody who meal preps and you bake a lot of or cook a lot of stuff ahead of time, you're like, okay, I don't want to have a plain baked potato. Just chop it up and put some mayonnaise, Dijon, little Worcestershire or hot sauce, whatever in it and seasonings. It's so good. I want to eat it all. It's delicious. I love potatoes and I love potato salad, but I think I like this version the best. I can tell you this is definitely not done yet, but I'm going to sneak a peek. My cheese is starting to melt really nicely. All right. So I'm going to go through this cookbook a little bit more while we're waiting. We may not see the finished product of this, depending on how uh, much time we have. But I do really like this. Um, I do really like this book. And like a lot of basic cookbooks where they're like let's get you set up like it actually says this book is intended to make your life easier in it i share streamlined cooking techniques teach you how to make use of good quality convenience foods and suggest supplies for a well-stocked freezer and pantry so um he goes on to say things that you need to be a good cook and to not make it hard on yourself get them make sure you have a microwave oven you know um a toaster oven is a good purchase. A pressure cooker. I don't have a pressure cooker. I don't know. I never hopped on the Instant Pot thing, but if you're an Instant Pot user, we have a lot more Instant Pot cookbooks than we used to. We've been ordering a lot, so check those out. Um, food processor. A mini chop. I don't know what a mini chop is. A small version of a food processor that has a blade that spins much faster for grinding, drying. Oh. Like a, like a spice grinder, I guess. Which a lot of people just use a coffee, it's a coffee grinder. But they keep separate. <laughs> you don't wanna grind your coffee in the same grinder that you're grinding your spices in. An immersion blender, which I, I don't like to have. It says it's good to have, um, there's nothing to wash, and it goes directly into the super vegetable mixture. You puree it in seconds, but I don't mind the extra step like last week when I was doing the, um, the broccoli cheese soup. I just transferred it to my blender. And that's fine, the extra step is fine, but you know, like he says, it's one extra thing to clean, um, and the immersion blender is so much easier to clean and whatever, but um, non-stick pans, of course, stainless steel strainers, steel knives, a salad spinner, a good size freezer, and then some good things to keep in your pantry. So it really is just like a quick and simple. And then there's a whole chapter of basics with things like a good mustard vinaigrette, a good 
spicy red salsa, um, cranberry relish with lime, that sounds fun, spicy cucumber relish, mushroom, tomato, and nut mix, I don't know, red pepper dip, um, no, me mushrooms, still not the best friends, um, a quick, a quick, quick tomato sauce, which is really nice, um, and then what does he go into? Some salads, a good guacamole, potatoes with red caviar. So some of it is fancy, but it shows you if you want to have fancy food, it can still be really simple. Um, black bean hummus with smoked oysters and sour cream. Okay, so the black bean hummus sounds good. I'm not, I don't know if I've ever actually had oysters. I've eaten clams and mussels before. I don't know if I've actually ever had oysters. I'm not sure. Um... Oh, I was gonna make this, but then I decided not to, but I thought about making this. Um, and again, this might be a good one for your uh, Thanksgiving table, for any holiday table to be in with. It's called Mom's Cheese and Spinach Souffle. Um, and he talks about that this recipe comes from his mother, so he's got like a very personal attachment to it. Um, and it's a very easy, but classic souffle to make. Uh, so I'll show this. Look at that. That that was gonna be one of our dishes for the day, and I decided I didn't I didn't need to make another souffle. I've already mastered chocolate souffles on here. Um, but this is just all-purpose flour, cold milk, salt, and pepper, ground nutmeg, spinach leaves, gruyere, four large eggs, and some flat leaf, basil, or parsley. And of course the spinach. Right, I forgot the spinach. Um, and it's really, it's really easy. And it looks like it puffs up so nice. So that's another one. So if you're looking for more side dish recipes and inspiration, I'm going to bring this book back to the library so you can check this out. It might be good for you. Um, I just, that's, that recipe sounds so good. I had it bookmarked for the longest time before I decided I didn't want to make another souffle. Um, different kinds of salad. Turkey salad for your leftover turkey. Chickpea salad. There's our potato salad. Um, butternut squash soup is in here if you want to do the squash thing for Thanksgiving and this is really 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 easy he says you can use fresh but you can use frozen um, it's cooked with apple cider and scallions onion also a carrot some chicken stock and the butternut squash salt pepper nutmeg and it literally the instructions for this are literally put everything in the saucepan Put all of the, the vegetables in the saucepan, heat for three minutes, then add the liquid and bring to a boil and then simmer for 25 minutes and then it's done. Like how easy is that? So again, this is a great cookbook. You wanna have nice things, but how do you make it simple? Ooh, scallions au gratin, a lot of gratins in here. Um, yams with maple syrup and butter, that's really basic, but it's in here too. A potato omelet, there are a lot of potatoes in here. <laughs> My favorite. Creamy stewed potatoes, a good mashed potato recipe is also in here. Uh, marinated mushrooms, if you want mushrooms for your holidays. Cream of corn pudding, corn fritters in beer batter, which sounds really good, but I don't like to fry things, so I decided not to do that today. Steamed cauliflower with lemon butter. The noodles I mentioned before, all the desserts I mentioned before. There's a pasta and rice chapter. Oh, there's a fondue recipe in here too. So maybe you just do like small plates and appetizers for the holidays. There's a fondue recipe in here. Cheese fondue, of course. Um, fondue au fromage is what it's called. Ooh, an instant chocolate mousse. What's so instant about it? <laughs> Whip the cream until it holds a peak, but not too firm because you don't want to make butter. Refrigerate. Then you do half and half in chocolate um, on a saucepan. Ooh, add Grand Marnier. And then you just fold it in to the whipped cream. Wow, that is a nice, easy chocolate mousse. Crumbled cookie coffee ice cream. Chocolate sauce. Poached figs with Campari. That's very Italian. Um, Bartlett pears and puff pastry. And again, he says, you know, I'm not going to give you a recipe for puff pastry. That's hard. Use frozen puff pastry. And here's how to use it to the best of its and your ability. So this is a really good cookbook. Um, and I can see it being quite popular. Lamb curry, marinated lamb chops, broiled ham steaks. Some things I wouldn't eat, like rabbit and tripe 
it's in here if you're looking for that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure my grandpa would be like, tripe, yes, let's have it. Um, so again, this is the Jacques Pepin Quick and Simple. I'll show you next week's cookbook since I have it right here. Carla Hall, soul food. I love Carla Hall. I love watching her on TV all the time. I think she's got a great personality. Um, there are also these sorghum drop biscuits that I considered, uh, but I was not going to buy sorghum flour or fat-free vegetable shortening. Sorry. But the one that we are making is this spoon bread dressing. That's what we're going to make next week. Um, and she does, she actually says, I didn't even read the description. Oh my God, did I just create the best Thanksgiving dressing ever? Yes, yes, I did. You're welcome. Um, stuffing, dressing, stuffing. Onion, celery, sage, it, suspended in a one pan cornbread. So, sounds really good. So it's like part stuffing, part cornbread. Uh, so we'll see how that comes out. I'm pretty excited. But this is a really good cookbook too. We'll go over it next week. It's time to check on my... Uh, pumpkin gratin. Let's see if it's, I don't think it's going to be ready yet, but we're going to give it a little jiggle and I'll see what it looks like. Oh, it's bubbling. How are we doing? I think it's almost done. So it's probably going to be another 10 or so minutes. So I'm going to let it stay in the oven. I'm going to let it go for another 10 minutes and I will share a picture of it when we are all done. Um, it smells really good in there too. The combination of the cheese and the pumpkin, I can smell both of them. It smells really good. So I'll post a picture when it's all done, but there's no need to keep you here for another 10 minutes when you could also be eating your lunch because I'm going to warm up my chicken and have my potato salad. Again, that warm potato salad the recipe is in this cookbook and it is right now available on our website for another week or so i will leave the thanksgiving sides recipes up of course through thanksgiving so don't forget so these two recipes are on our website right now they're in these cookbooks um and then i'll put up next week's side recipes in just a couple of hours so you can check those out as well and if you want to cook along with me next week i'll be here next wednesday at 12. um it's not going to be live next week, sorry. It's not going to be live next week um, because next week our director Laura and I are picking up the cakes and pies from our fundraiser and we want to thank everybody for participating in our fundraiser. I know it's like not twisting your arm to ask you to buy cheesecakes and pies and cakes because they're from Carousel and they're so delicious, but all of the orders that we got really mean so much to us because some of the funds come back to the library to... Um, just, just fund improvements to the library and programming and everything. So thank you so much to everybody who ordered and we're going to be picking those up from Carousel on Wednesday. So uh, I'll have a pre-recorded uh, video for you next Wednesday for book hooks, but make sure to tune in. The recipes will be on the website and we're gonna do biscuits and spoon bread. Those are perfect for Thanksgiving. So I hope I can help everybody out a little bit with um, having a nice Thanksgiving, no matter what it looks like this year. All right, everyone, it's time for me to go have my lunch, finish up this gratin, and get back to work for the rest of the day. And I will see you all soon, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye!